Hello, friends. It's Suzanne Kohlberg. Welcome to episode 260 of the Nope Coach podcast, Grief Groceries. If you've listened to the show before, you know I don't nominally put in trigger warnings. However, I will be talking about grief in this episode. So if it's particularly raw or close to the surface for you right now, you might want to skip this one and I will catch you tomorrow. I saw this post on social media yesterday titled Grief Groceries that I really wanted to share. As somebody who is actively grieving, I lost my mother just over two months ago. Um, I shared it up on socials because I thought it was just so potent. So I'm going to read it out for the show today. And credit goes to Hugh Hollowell Jr., who's the original uh, content creator of this piece. I did not write this. So... It says, grief is a funny thing. It's the time in our lives when we most need help and also the time when asking for help is so hard. Not because we are ashamed to ask for help, although it happens sometimes too, but mostly because our brain sorts of sort, (laughs) mostly because our brain just sort of shuts down. When my dad died, I looked functional, but I wasn't okay. Not at all. And when the news got out, the ton of people flooding me with calls, texts, and DMs was overwhelming. I really couldn't function. I sat on the swing in our yard and just stared into space. People called and asked what they could do to help. I had no idea. Well, anything you need at all, let me know, okay? Okay. They hung up. I stared into space some more. I had no idea what to do next, what I needed. I didn't even know what to ask for. Then a friend sent a text. This friend had met dad once but really didn't know him. But still, she knew I was hurting. I saw who it was and almost put the phone down without reading the text, but I saw the message and it stopped me. Will you be home at 8.30 tonight? That's weird. This friend lives 12 hours away from me. Yes, I replied. Okay. 10 minutes later, she said, Instacart will be there at 8.30. Open the door for them. What? Grief groceries. When Instacart showed up, they put two large bags of groceries on my porch. Frozen pizzas, ice cream, Oreo cookies, tin soup, lasagna, a gallon of milk, things like that. Things I could heat up if I needed a meal or pig out on if I needed fat and sugar. Sometimes you just need to eat half a box of Oreos. Notice she didn't ask if I needed any food. I would have said no. She just asked me if I would be home. Grief groceries. Another friend who lived out of town asked Renee to name a restaurant near our house where we like to eat. There is a local chain near our house that is sort of a deli. When we eat supper there, we spend about $25. Renee told her the name of the place. An hour later, there was a gift card in my inbox for $250. Yes, that is a lot of money, and I understand not everyone can do that. But the wonderful thing was that because it was enough for multiple meals, we didn't try to save it for the right time. We ate there that night and take out from there several times a week for the next month or nights when I just didn't have the spoons to cook. Both of those gift givers knew something I didn't know, that when you are grieving, you don't want to make decisions. No, that's not quite right. You can't make decisions. You hit decision fatigue really fast. So I guess what I'm saying is don't ask grieving people to make big choices or decisions. How can I help is a big choice. But can I take the kids this afternoon so you can have some time to yourself is a much smaller one. Will you be home tonight is a small choice. What restaurant do you like is a small choice. Just showing up to cut their grass because you notice it needed cutting is loads better than asking, do you want me to cut the grass or I'm going to target what can I do for you while I'm there? Oh, sorry. I'm going to target what can I get for you while I'm there is much better than can I run any errands for you. It won't always be like this. If you stick around, eventually they will surface and always want to be helpful and make themselves known. But in the first few days, especially if it helps to remove any decisions from their plate as you can. And I just loved this because it gave specific examples. Sometimes, you know, our well-meaningness, oh, if I lived closer, I live so far away, like that does not help. Um, And I loved the example too, like the $250 is a big ask and a big gift card. Not everybody can afford that. It's not about the amount of money, but, you know, where do you like to eat? And then it came in the inbox. Will you be home at this time? I remember when... um, this is not related to grief, but when COVID hit, we were overseas. We'd literally just left on a cruise and then we got turned around and came back. We went straight into quarantine. So we weren't allowed to go to the shops. We didn't know um, 
anyone to ask to go and get us groceries and the home delivery service had all cancelled and we were really stuck. And then a friend who lived in another country organised, like she rallied, she found someone and they dropped off washing powder, milk, food, snacks, all sorts of things. And that was one of the most fabulous things that's ever happened for us. And to this day, I'm still really, really appreciative for that. Um, When my mum passed recently, one of my friends sent me, and I've got it here, it's absolutely glorious, like a hand-poured candle um, from Riverina Essentials. It's an Australian brand. Highly recommend you check them out. Um, I think it's coconut and lime. It smells glorious. Another friend sent me such a thoughtful gift, an Audible credit, because she knows that, um, you know, when you're going through grief and you can't focus, sometimes listening. And, um, yeah, I just could download an Audible book. Some of these things, you know, they it's not about the amount of money you spend. It's showing that you care and that you think of them without making them think. When I shared that post that I found yesterday that one I just read about brief groceries on social media, a number of people DM'd me almost immediately, are you okay? Which I love and appreciate, but also goes to show they did not read the post because if I wasn't okay, then that that would not have helped. The, the message of the post is that, you know, when people are spinning out or they're overwhelmed or they're in decision fatigue, you're, are you okay? You're just going to get a yes or a no answer or probably just yes or fine or one worded thing. But like, how can you be supportive without putting more pressure onto them? An episode I did recently within the last week or so, if you scroll back, it was um, one with Laura Gates Lupton about circles I'll find the episode number I think it's episode 255 circles of care with Laura Gates Lupton it also speaks to something similarly as in not inadvertently putting more pressure on the person who is overwhelmed or grieving or not making their responses mean anything about you because they you know the that post from um the grief groceries that spoke about the just staring off into space the decision fatigue, the inability to focus. That is something that I have not experienced so deeply as when I'm in grief. And yeah, it's it's totally a thing. And then to have to potentially worry about your responses to other people on top of your own stuff, like you just don't have the spoons for it. So yeah, I'd love to hear if you're watching this on YouTube, you can pop it in the comments or you can send me an email info at suzannekolberg.com. What have been some useful gifts or acknowledgements that you have received when you're grieving or things that you have given others? Um, Because I think we don't discuss this enough, uh, especially in, you know, in the Western world, we don't have um, grief circles. We don't have grief support. It's just, yeah, it's, it's not discussed enough. And like, For me personally, I don't like receiving flowers and I never buy flowers because the acknowledgement or the thought might be there, but you're just giving something that's about to die to somebody who's just had a loss. I I personally, I don't enjoy that, but that's why I liked the groceries. Um, Oh, that's the other thing I had. I had a lady um, message and say, I'm taking Casimir. Well, you know, can I take Casimir to um, like one of the local play centers? And I was like, oh, that would be fabulous. And then she's like, um, I know I said it's going to be a few hours. Do you mind if I stay longer? Because the kids are having a ball. And I was like, please do. And just having, not having the kids for a day. Um, so, you know, what are ways that you can support people? Groceries, gifts, cards, audible credits, taking the kids, cutting the grass or organizing someone to, um, there's just, yeah, there's so many things. And I loved the other thing about that grief groceries piece was the big decisions versus the little decisions. So, you know, making the question that you ask really, really simple so they don't need to overthink it. Like, you know, are you going to be home at this time? Instacart's coming. Um, And yeah, gift vouchers that they can use at any time or they can put into smaller denominations to, you know, rather than just save it, I'm going to save this, I'm going to save this and never actually action it. And on the flip side of this, having, you know, thoughts about, how you can ask for your needs to be met in times where you don't have spoons or you don't have capacity and, you know, trusting that the people who love and support you, you know, will understand that probably will come into a topic on another day, but 
you know, the friends and loved ones, are you available to chat or do you have spoons to listen or I'm having a tough time, can I vent? Can I vent is one of the most amazing and growing permission, you know, giving things rather than just, oh, I'm having a bad day and, you know, taking off. You haven't even asked for consent. Can that person hold space for you today? Um, I haven't been, for my friends, a lot of vent holding recently um, and they get it. But just that thing like, you know, have you got spoons for this or I've got some um, something I'd like to run by you. Are you available? These little things that ask before immediately dumping into the stuff can make all the difference in, you know, friendships and relationships. So, yeah, I... I really found that post about grief groceries to bring this episode to a close potent, something to think about. And um, yeah, that's why I'm sharing it with you today. I'm Suzanne Kohlberg. Thank you for tuning in. This has been episode 260. Hope to see you on the next one. Bye for now.